1 Timothy 6.12, fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold. Lay hold on eternal life. Lay hold on eternal life. Lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called. You better get a grip, folks. And you better get a grip on eternal life. And you better never let it be pried out of your hands. Never you die with it firmly grasped in your hands. I'm not losing my way in this world. The devil's not going to deceive me or rob me. And the enemy's not going to blindside me. I got a hold of eternal life. I'm going to obey his word. I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm all in no matter the price. Because if you don't hold on to eternal life, it'll slip out of your hands. And you'll find yourself lost. As one writer put it, eternity is like an anchor that has been cast ahead of us and it's pulling us to its place. There's an anchor that has been cast ahead of us and it's pulling us toward heaven. It's pulling us to our eternal destiny. It's pulling us towards God. Can I remind you some of the craziest teachings that Jesus ever did? Some of the most mind-boggling teaching that Jesus ever did was in the area of eternity. I'm going to prove it to you. Matthew chapter 18, Jesus is teaching. And he teaches this radical thought. You need to ask yourself when I say this, have I ever done that? This is what he said. He said, if your hand offends you, cut it off. If your feet offend you, cut it off. If your eye offended you, pluck it out. Because it would be better for you to go into heaven limping. But I'm limping on gold. I made eternity my home. Then you to go in with a swagger into hell. Both feet. But you got the game. Can I tell you? It would be better for you to use a crutch all the way to heaven. And whether going in with brand new Nikes on your feet. But you're lost. And you're going to hell. So last time, let me ask you, I don't know anybody in this church that's done that. No, because we think we can manage our sin. We think somehow God magically is going to pardon us and forgive us and make sure, you know, we get it and he understands and sprinkle prixie dust on us and somehow we're going to make it in. Can I tell you, if Jesus put it at the extreme, you need to pluck out your eye. You better take a second look at eternity and ask yourself, how serious am I about heaven? How much do I want to go to heaven? How much does heaven mean to me? What is my eternal destiny? What's its value? Jesus wasn't done yet. He said, sit up, boys and girls. I got more to share with you. Mark chapter 8 said, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? A man came by even all of Goodlettsville. A man cannot even purchase all of Nashville. A man cannot even get enough resources to purchase all of Tennessee. He couldn't even buy enough of the United States of America. He could no way even purchase North America. But Jesus said, throw all seven continents together. Roll them up in a business deal. Put a contract on it. And if you bought the world and you lost your soul, you lost. I don't know about you, but some of us are selling out a whole lot cheaper than just the world. Some of us are selling out a whole lot cheaper. You got offended. You got a bad attitude. You don't want to live holy before God. Can I tell you, it ain't going to matter what you look like when you're burning. It ain't going to matter what you look like when you're hitting gold. What's going to matter is that you're in the presence of God and that you love God and you made heaven your home. Amen. Some of you are selling out a whole lot more than just the world. And the enemy wants us to play games. But let me tell you, that reality, that idea is what pulled people through. Why they gave up everything to follow Jesus. Maybe that's why the wise men wrote, God has planted eternity in your heart. God did not plant death in your heart. Sin plants death in your heart. But God planted eternity. 
That's why there's something inside of you even today that's pulling you towards heaven. That's why something's reviving. I feel it in the Holy Ghost. Something's percolating. Something is gaining life. Something is beginning to rejuvenate. Let me tell you, that's that walk with God. That's that relationship with God you love and you crave and you know is real. That's that hunger that you used to have. That passion that used to consume you. That desire that led your life. That hunger again. That desire again. That reality again. Where would you get that from? Where did you get that from? Where did you get that from? I'll give you one clue. God planted it in your spirit. And he said, I want you to let that lead you. I want you to let it drive you. I wanted to let it bless you. I would not do you justice if I did not at least tell you how you get to eternity with Jesus. Because that's the crucial thing. It's not that we're good people. It's not that we feed the hungry. It's not that we go visit the poor and visit the sick and visit the, those in prison. We need to do all that. And that's so important. But can I tell you, there's something more important than just that. That's to make sure that your relationship with God is right. There's a scripture that tells us about a man named Nicodemus, John chapter 3. And Nicodemus was a religious man, a smart man, astute man. And he comes to Jesus, but Jesus recognized, Nicodemus, you're hungry. That the eternity's pulling you. You're not here to talk about the nuances of Judaism and Christianity. You're, you're not trying to just have some th uh, theological conversation. No, Nicodemus, there's something inside of you that wants answers that you don't have. And your religious can't provide it for you. So Jesus just cut to the chase. He didn't mince words. He didn't try to pull out a flannel graph or chart. He said, I want to tell you something. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Nicodemus, I want to tell you how you make sure you get your eternal destiny right. You need to be born of the water, which is baptism. Don't ever let anybody lie to you and say that's a physical, natural birth. That is not what Jesus is talking about. He is talking about the kingdom of heaven, not talking about natural things. You must be born of water, which is baptism. And you must be born of the Spirit, which is the Holy Ghost. And when you're baptized in the name of Jesus, and when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, and you know you have the Holy Ghost because you spoke in tongues, when you have that reality in your life, you have now have a ticket to get yourself to eternity with Jesus Christ. That's how it begins. That's where it starts. That's how we start this process of making sure we're right with God and have a right relationship with God. You must be baptized in the name of Jesus and you must be filled with the Holy Ghost. Don't you ever apologize of obeying the word of God. Don't ever apologize. Don't ever let anybody talk to you. Well, all you got to have is faith and all you got to do is believe in Jesus and say a sinner's prayer. If that's what was true, Jesus would have told Nicodemus that. But that's not what he told Nicodemus. Why do we let man's words supplement the Bible? Why do we let men confuse the Bible? Why? Why do we let people confuse the word of God? That's not what the, the Bible says. The Bible tells us that we need to be baptized in the name of Jesus and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And how many are grateful that you've been baptized in the name of Jesus and been filled with the Holy Ghost? Brother Dago, you can start coming because I'm going to tell you something. I have never regretted speaking in tongues. I have never, for, I've never regretted being baptized in the name of Jesus. I have never regretted letting the Holy Ghost begin to lead and direct and guide my life. I've never regretted that. The greatest things in my life have come because of I've allowed the Holy Ghost to saturate and empower me and the Holy Ghost to consume me. Those are the greatest things in my life and I don't Regret that one bit because you can have the whole world and lose your soul. And what does it profit 